Hello, what's up and welcome back to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to try to create a snake game using Playmaker. This is going to be a quite lengthy tutorial, so I'm going to split this tutorial into a couple of episodes. And this is what we are going to create here. And here, as you can see, I have a very sh short snake, short starting snake. And if we eat the fruit, the body goes longer. And if we hit our own body part, you see we are now game over. The snake stopped to move. Okay, so let's jump into it. Okay, so now I have a new scene here and it only consists of camera. And I've set the camera orthographic size to 5 and the projection to orthographic. In this game, we are not going to use any component other than sprite render. And I've already prepared a prefabs first for the body parts. Here, the body parts only consist of a sprite, a square sprite, and I've set the scale to 0 0.25 on the x and the y. And we need to remember this value here because this is going to be our step for our translation movement. And I've also prepared a fruit prefab. It's basically the same prefab as before, but with a color of green here. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to reset its value here. And I'm going to call this snake logic. And this will control the snake movement. And I'm going to open the Playmaker editor. And I'm going to create a new FSM. And this FSM, I'm going to rename it to control. And we need to create four different events for this FSM. So the first is going to be up pressed, and then down pressed, and then left pressed. And the last one will be the right pressed. And here for the first state, let's just call this wait for key. And we want to add all of those transition here. So the first should be up and then down. The order doesn't really matter though, but I'm going to reserve the order like so. And I'm going to create a new state for each of these transitions. So we can hold control and then click somewhere else. And I'm going to rename this up. This would be down. And this would be left. And we can add finish transition on all of the state here. And the last thing that we want to create is another state here below. And we can just call this set direction. And we can connect all of the finish transition to the set direction here. And let's add a finish transition to the state here and then connect this to the first state. So inside wait for key, we want to add get key down action. And we want to create four instances of this key down action. And the first one would be the up arrow and then down arrow. And for the send event, we should send to the event according to the key press. So for the up arrow, this should be up press and so are the others. And here we want to set up a factor. So I'm going to create new set factor. 3xyz and we want to create a new factor variable so I'm going to create a new one here and let's just call this direction and let's just disable all of the use variable here and for up we want to set the y value to 1 and I'm going to copy this action here and then paste it on the down state and for the down I'm going to set the y to negative 1 and for the left, we want to set the y to 0 and the x to negative 1. And for the right, we want to set the y to 0 and the x to 1. Now we need to create another FSM. I'm going to create a new one here. And let's just call this snake movement. And for the snake movement, I'm going to create a new factor 3 variable. And I'm going to call this direction. And I'm going to go back to the control FSM and I'm going to send the direction value from our control to our snake movement here. 
so we can just use the set vector 3 FSM and then here we can pick the FSM name which is snake movement and for the variable name we want to pick the direction and we want to set its value to the direction that we've generated in the previous state here okay let's save the scene and now we can start working on the snake movement so for the snake movement we need to add an in compare on the first state here and we want to loop to a certain amount to spawn the initial body parts so first state here I'm going to call this initialize body parts and if it's equal then we want to go to the finish event but we don't have here so let's just add a finish transition and pick finish and if it less than then we want to spawn a new event here so I'm going to create new event called generate body and add the transition generate body to this state here and we can create a new state and now here we can spawn body and for the first integer here let's create a new integer variable and this is going to be the loop and in the spawn body first we want to create a new float value and this will be the y position of the initial body part so i'm going to create a new y position variable and i'm going to set its value to our loop value our current loop value so we can just go to the convert menu here and pick the loop variable and then we want to multiply the float value by our step which is 0 0.25 so i'm going to pick the y position and then here i'm going to multiply it by negative 0 0.25 so we will have a nice new snake and the body part will shift downward when starting the game and then we want to create new vector 3 and let's just set the y value to the y position here and we need to create a new variable to hold the vector variable so this let's just call this initial position and now we need to spawn the body part so I'm going to use the create object action and I'm going to pick the body parts from our assets so let's just go to the assets here and I'm going to pick for the part prefabs here and for the position we can just pick the initial position and we can store the object to a new variable and we need to store this to add to the array of the body part so I'm going to call this current spawn and then I'm going to create a new array on the variable so let's just create a new array and let's just call this body parts and we want to set the type to game object and now we want to add the array member using the array add we can pick the body parts and for the value we can just pass the current spawn so this will add the newly spawned object into our array and below the array add here we want to add an integer add and we want to increase the loop number so let's just pick the loop and then add by one here and we can just add a finish transition and go back to the first state and now we need to create a new state here and this would be the initialized length and we can connect the finish transition to the initial initialized length here so I'm going to create a couple state here first I'm going to create loop body parts to make things easier I'm going to create another state and this will map our FSM loops here and we can just call this check for head and I'm going to create a new state and this one would be for move head and the other one would be the move body and we, we will connect all of this and this when the head hits the body so game over 
and this would be eat fruit and now for the initialize length we want to use the array length action and then pick the body parts array and save it to a integer variable and I'm going to call this length and I'm going to add a weight action here and this will decide the speed of our game here so I'm going to set this to 0 0.1 so basically we are going to loop all of this action every 0 0.1 seconds and if you want to make this faster you can always decrease the value reduce the time value here and it will make the loop faster and here I'm going to add a finish transition and fire the event from the weight action here and then connect to the loop body parts okay so for the loop body parts I'm going to use the array sorry array get next and for the end index we want to pick the length variable so this will be dynamic every time we eat fruit this length will grow and then on the next loop we are going to loop even more of our body parts and for the loop event I'm going to create a new event here and let's just call it loop here and we can add that transition here and then connect to this part here and on the array get next we need to set the array to the body parts and we need to store the game object result to the current spawn we can use this because we are not using this anymore at this moment we will already finish spawning the body so we can just reuse this variable and we can save the current index to the loop integer variable because we are not using this anymore here so we can just use this again and here I want to compare the integer loop and if it's zero if it's equal than zero I'm going to create a new event called move head and if it's greater I'm going to create a new event called move body and I'm going to add both of this transition here and I'm sorry I'm going to change the first one this is wrong so this should be move head and I'm going to connect the move head to the move head state here and move body to the move body here and inside the move head we need to get the position of our current body part which is the head so I'm going to use the get position action and we can pick the current spawn variable which is the current iteration of our body parts from our array and we can save it to a new vector and let's just call this previous position or current position and set this to world and I'm going to copy the direction vector variable so I'm going to create a new vector tree variable using the set, set vector tree value here and I'm going to create a new variable called direction scale and we can just copy the direction value here and we want to multiply this direction scaled variable using the vector tree multiply and we want to multiply it by 0 0.25 which is the size of our prefabs so it will move every 0 0.25 unit on every iteration so let's just use direction scale and then we can translate our head using the translate action and we can just disable the every frame and per second here we don't need this and for the space I'm going to set this to world and we can pick the current spawn variable and move it using the direction scale vector and after moving the object here I'm going to get another position value using the get position action and just pick the current spawn here but this time I'm going to save this to another variable a new one called head position and we are going to compare this position with our body later so we can know if the head collides with our body then we can go to this game over state and now on the move body state here we want to copy a vector tree value so we can just use the set vector tree value and I'm going to create a new variable called next position and I'm going to copy the current position so because we are going to override this current position 
with the current position of the body parts here. So I'm going to copy this to the next position. And here I'm going to use the get position action. And we want to pick the current position before we move the body here. So we can just specify game object and then use current spawn. Select the current spawn variable. And then save this to the current position. And this will override the current position. But at the same time, we need to reposition the body parts to the current position from the head position. That's why I'm saving this current position into another variable. And then we can use this variable to move the body parts. So the next body parts will follow the last position of our head. And same goes to the other body parts. We'll follow the previous iterations of the body parts. And here, I'm going to use the set position action. And we want to set the current spawn position to the next position variable that we've copied here on the first state and set the space to row. And now we need to add a finish transition on the move head and goes back to this loop body part. And the same goes with the move body. We need to add a finish transition. And now we can test this here. So let's just test and increase the body parts. Set this to 10. I'm going to save the scene and let's test this out. Oh, there seems to be an issue here. Okay, yeah, I forgot. Here, whenever we loop the body parts, if we finish looping the body parts, then we need to add a finish transition and then send this transition to the first, to the initialized length state here. So this will update the body length and then it will wait for 0 0.1 second. And I'm go we are going to loop the body parts based on the new length here. So in the finish event, we want to send the finish transition here. Now we can test this. Okay, there is an issue here because the first direction is 0, 0, 0. So we want to make sure that uh, on our direction variable, we can just set this value to 0, 1, 0 on the X and Y and Z action. So it will move upwards by default. Okay, now let's test this. And now as you can see, we have a very nice snake movement. And now the next thing that we need to determine is to check the collision with the head against the body here. So here we already grab the head position after we translate it. So we can compare this position with the each of the body part loop here. So I'm going to use a factor three operator and I'm going to move this above the set position and I'm going to make sure that this set position is the most lower, the most bottom action on the stack. And here under the vector3 operator, I'm going to subtract the current position of our body parts with the head position. And we want to compare the distance of this two vector here and save it to the float value here. So I'm, let's just create a new float variable. Let's just call this vector delta or distance. And we can compare this float value here. So let's just add a float compare. And if the value is very small or near to zero, it means that the head has been collided. So we can just check for the vector distance. And for the second float, we can set this to zero. And for the tolerance, I'm going to set to a very small value, which is 0 0.02. And if it's equal, then it means that the head collides with one of the body parts. So I'm going to add a new event here. Let's just call this dead. And we can add this event transition to this move body state here. And then we can connect this to game over. And here inside the game over, I'm going to leave this empty like now, but you can trigger anything to show that the player or the game has ended. Okay, let's save this and let's give it a try. Now we can move here and let's just try to hit the our own body part. There you go. When we hit the body part, we go to this game over state. So yeah, this will be all for this episode on creating a snake game using Playmaker. 
and we are going to continue to implement the fruit mechanics and the growing body size of our snake. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more Unity tutorials with C-Sharp and Playmaker and also Bolt. Stay tuned for the next episode.